Hey guys, it's Dan Dix here from Press for Truth. It is Saturday, June 25th, and we are currently down here at Queens Park today for the one year anniversary of the G20 Summit. Now many of the people you will see behind me here were directly affected last year. Uh, many of us witnessed and experienced things that we most certainly will never ever forget. So we are here today to join in with them in solidarity to continue this push for a full federal public inquiry. A public inquiry, an independent inquiry that looks at the federal government involvement, it looks at Dalton McGinty's involvement, it looks at the mayor's of Toronto's involvement, and it looks at the police involvement. Nothing less than satisfiers. Thank you for fighting. Thank you for standing on the sidelines. And don't give up, my friends. We're going to get a public inquiry, and we're going to see the head of the chief of police is going to roll in this city. Because you cannot, you cannot be standing behind a bunch of thugs who attack the citizens of our community and still somehow maintain credibility as the chief of police. That's not on, chief player. Step down and do the honourable thing. It's time you left. And then we get a full public inquiry. Thank you very much, sisters and brothers. Everyone sitting at home, you know, watching CP24 and watching police cars burning, where they would realize that falsely that this was exactly what they had cooked it up to be was lots of vandals are going to come to Toronto and create havoc and run around, whatever. Then they could lump us all in with them to kind of squash the move, like this movement or this grassroots movement of people that are socially and co consciously politically aware of what's going on. Some of you may know me as the Rogue Page. The power of the people in the streets is greater than the power of any government. Last year's G20 mobilization and the mounting resistance against Harper's right-wing agenda in Toronto show us where true power lies, in the hands of the people who are committed and fearless. Toronto was a laboratory for the security threats that the Harper government now wants to experiment with everywhere. The social chaos and pain he inflicted on this city is a microcosm of the social chaos and pain he wants to inflict to this country. But we will stop him. There were some serious uh, issues with the way in which uh, they approached the entire exercise. I think they chose a policing technique that was very punitive uh, toward uh, the protesters generally. Uh, and it did not do any good in terms of uh, uh, allowing them to react to, the, to the, the vandalism and the property damage. But it was extremely punitive and very aggressive toward protesters. And they chose that technique, which meant that by definition they were going to arrest and massively detain completely innocent people. And I think that's the, that's a hard choice in a democracy. The fact that they chose to uh, to a little bit undermine the right of peaceful assembly by accepting that they were going to arrest massively people that just happened to be there at the wrong place at the wrong time is dangerous in a democracy. Canada reacts to civil rights violations in other countries. It's time to look into our own human rights violations at the G20. Right. Do I have to ask the leaders of a foreign government to convince our Prime Minister that Canada needs an open and fully independent inquiry to review the massive human rights violations that occurred at the G20. We continue to think that this would be the most efficient way of dealing with the problem. All these uh, in, uh, individual inquiries do not respond to the fact that it was an integrated uh, uh, policing effort, so it's inefficient to proceed the way we have. And I think the true leadership would be to say we need a public inquiry to heal a little bit uh, what the, 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 the relationship that is developing between the city of Toronto and its citizens and the police.
this intersection in unprecedented breaking of rights and demeaning of Canadian citizens at the hands of Toronto Police Service. police van with a camera strapped to the top of it. These vans are used by uh, police services to photograph protesters at events uh, such as this and what they do is they process the images using what they call facial recognition profiling to identify that person's face uh, by creating an algorithm of the face. So then they can use that on a database to identify you at protests or various uh, other events. So what's the camera on top of the truck for? Like what's the Take pictures. Take pictures? Is the camera on your shoulder for Photograph. Is it used in part of like uh, the facial recognition stuff? I, I don't know. That's software, isn't it? That's not a specific camera. It's yeah. software. Oh, okay. But can it be used like that? I guess... No, I'm not an expert, but I would guess any video tape. So what you're taking with your camera? Yeah. You probably, you probably feed that into a, a computer program that's facial recognition. Oh, okay.